All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My guest today is James Arnold, and he's the Economic and, Com and Community Development Officer for the City of Edwardsville. And I appreciate James being on short notes. We had an open in the program. So yesterday's like, uh, do I need a PowerPoint? I said, no. So he was perfect. And he's somebody that's going to give us some great information on the city. And, you know, as I was thinking of this, you know, um, not sure if anybody's known. I mean, there's the amount of construction that's going around in town, especially Edwardsville and Glen Carbon is unbelievable. And we were kind of chalking at our table. I've been in town 30 years ago, and I remember there was either PKs, Rusties, or shenanigans, you know, and someone threw out a, and what was the Applebee's or the root beer place or something. And now we just are blessed with a lot of opportunities, local businesses, as well as other chains coming in the area. And you don't really have to leave town if you don't want to. There's a lot to offer and a lot of good things happening. So uh, a little bit about James is he is an Edwardsville High School uh, graduate, 2004. And he went to McKendry University where he got his bachelor's as well as his master of arts. He attended uh, the University of Oklahoma, uh, the Economic Development Institute. Oh, we got a clap there. All right. Okay. There we go. Uh, University of Missouri, St. Louis, Chancellor's Certificate in Fundamentals of Economic Development. James serves on a few different boards, the City of Edwardsville, of course, he's on the Recreation, he's on the Arts and Special Events Committees, Heartland Advisory Board, um, and the Illinois Economic Development Association Board as well. Uh, James served, I think previously I was going to ask with the city, with the county of Madison, right? Madison County in a very similar type of role. And he's been with the, the city for three years now. So I think he just had his anniversary. Um, personally, uh, in his spare time, James enjoys spending time with his wife, Katie, and his two daughters, Murphy and Lennon. Uh, James says he's uh, Edwardsville through and through. This is home. Uh, he loves the parks, hiking, summer events at the park, everything to do with the city. He's all, I didn't know this. This was a great conversation. He's also passionate about soccer, and he is the head coach of the Modern Day Varsity Boys Soccer Program for the last 16 years. That's crazy. I said, how long does it take you to get there? And he goes, long enough. And if it's farming season, even longer back, you know. So, uh, but anyways, it's all good. So, James, thanks for coming up and talking to the group. It's always funny. I always have to adjust the mic when I come up and talk to people. Usually the person before me is at least five inches taller than me. Um, so I was here actually two months ago. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so two months <laughs> ago. Wow. <laughs> So two months ago, I was here in this exact same spot doing the business forecast breakfast with Mayor Rizabi, and we shared a lot of news from 2023 and kind of some things that we're looking for and uh, looking towards happening in 2024. I'm a community and economic developer. Um, a lot of times people don't necessarily know what that means. Uh, it can mean many things. But to me, um, as an economic developer, I work with the city planners, city administration, city council, the mayor. Um, to help our town not necessarily grow in this crazy way, but grow in a very professional, smart way. Um, I, as a community developer, I feel like I am a man that answers to the citizens, to the people. Um, a couple of community development things that I am a part of with the city, uh, I run our special events grant program. That's, that's a grant that goes to help fund the events in City Park or things like the bike races, uh, the, the wonderful criterium. Um, I also get to run the special uh, grant program for housing rehabilitation. The city said, hey, James, you know, you used to run grants for Madison County. What, what can you do for Edwardsville? And I created a single family rehabilitation program and I was able to help in this past fiscal year, approximately eight homes. Uh, which is a really, really cool thing for me, being from this town and seeing some of our older housing stock. Uh, <clears throat> the one piece that we've left out so far is I'm also the grants coordinator for the city. The one thing I've noticed like year after year, like the first year, you're the economic developer. The second year, you're the community developer. The third year, you're the grants coordinator. And next year, I'm moving into Nate's office because Nate uses me all the time for parks things. <laughs> he knows it's true too. <laughs> 
So with grants, I look at different grant opportunities for the city, which kind of goes towards economic development. It goes towards community development. There's grants that come from the state government uh, through DCO, different departments. There's also grants that come to Edwardsville from the federal level, where you get to work with your federal senators, your federal representatives. Uh, we're working on a grant right now uh, that came specifically from Senator Durbin. Uh, it's a re, uh, we're redoing a water line over on Cass Avenue, which is one of our oldest water lines and areas in town. A uh, really neat grant opportunity there. Just to highlight some things that I look at in my field of economic development, in 2023, our EAV, which is our estimated assessed value, approached $997 million. That is a very large number, which means everybody has a very high property value in, in this area. Businesses have high property value. That is a great thing to champion because I work for Madison County. I've been on the other side of this. I, I can take you to places in Madison County or St. Clair County that are not as fortunate as, as what we are in Edwardsville. And a lot of that is because of our business. It's because of our people. It's because of everybody here partnering and making this town so great. Last year in 2023, we had $82 million in investment. Again, I, I champion that number just because there's, look at Madison County, look at some of the air, St. Louis MSA. There's not a lot of cities getting that type of investment, but Edwards and Hunt Carbon together are doing some very wonderful things. <clears throat> Last year, we had 977 permits pulled. That's a lot of permits. Um, and by comparison, in 2023, that was last year. In 2022, we had 984 permits pulled. So we were pulling large amounts of permits every single year. And most people would look at me and say, yeah, James, those are commercial permits. You're cutting down the trees. And I will say, well, actually the majority of these permits, the dollar amount is probably commercial high, but the other permits that are getting pulled are people that are reinvesting in their housing stock, reinvesting in this community. In 2024, so far, we are off to an incredible start. Um, I mean, you just drive around town, you can see many things happening. Um, most people can't tell me where Edwardsville stops and Glen Carver begins. Our, us townies know that though, we know. So what does my role look like for the city? What does an economic developer do for, let's say businesses? So in my coursework, one of the things that I uh, really, learned a lot about was something called business retention and expansion. Uh, there's a statistic out there across the United States that essentially 85 of your future, 85 percent of your future business is already in your backyard. So you should be talking and taking care of the people that are already here in your community and already investing in your community. A business retention and expansion visit is something uh, some businesses love to share, they love to talk. Other businesses are pretty private and, and stay quiet. And they don't like to share, but it's just a way for a city to say, hey, we're here for you. I love to hear your ideas. You know, what's the city doing right? More importantly, maybe what's the city doing wrong in your eyes, uh, which is also not always the easiest thing that, you know, when somebody's telling you you're doing something wrong, you really have to take an introspective look at yourself and say, okay, I get it. This is our perception out in, out in the community. What can we do to change that? Business retention and expansion visits are something that many communities are not doing. Um, I partnered with groups like Madison County Employment and Training to visit some businesses in town. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a business and say, you know what? I have never heard from the city of Edwardsville. And that's something incredible to think about. Business attraction. Steve reached out the other day. He said, hey, James, you know, I'd like to hear more about you. I'd like to know some things about business attraction. What does that look like for the city? How do you attract businesses to Edwardsville? Well, there, there's many ways. Um, over the years, Edwardsville has developed a name for itself through proper planning, through, through leadership. Um, when I first got to the city, I looked at... Uh, some older information and it appeared that the city was sending out packets, you know, pieces of paper to prospective companies with maybe a letter from the mayor on top of it saying, hey, you know, if you're ever thinking about um, relocating or looking to expand or just looking for a different opportunity, hey, take a look at Edwardsville. You know, we have 26,000 people. We have green space. We have a division one campus in our backyard. We have a community college in our backyard. Uh, we have many things going on for us. Please consider us. 
other forms of business attraction. I get to work with developers every day. Um, I, they're, they are my best friends. Um, there's no doubt about it. We, they are, they are Glen Carbon. Uh, they are Edwardsville natives. They are not from here. Uh, but daily you get a call from a developer and they're looking for the net, uh, like an idea for what Edwardsville needs or whatever Edwardsville wants. And I get to, I get to have those conversations with them. Now, I don't go off willy nilly James and say, hey, I want a Tesla dealership here. That'd be really cool. But I have to keep in mind Edwardsville is zoned a certain way. We have zoning code that protects from certain types of developments coming to town. I just heard that we need a Mediterranean restaurant. I think that's a great idea. I'd second that motion. Can I get it all in favor? General letters. You know, I, I get businesses that have talked to me, you know, hey, I just received a letter from the mayor of blank. Businesses pay attention to that. Businesses like seeing that person, that, that, that kind of touch, that outreach. So there's times where we've sent out letters um, in 2021. You know, nothing is too high to reach for when, when you are at a going to Harlem. Centene made a very large announcement uh, back in 2021, 2022. We reached out to them. We said, hey, why not? Let's have a conversation. We have some land in the I-55 corridor. You need a large campus. Let's have a conversation. They reached out and said, hey, you know, thank you for the letter. We're going to look elsewhere, but we appreciate it. So just knowing that it made it to the higher level of Centene, that, that tells you what people, how, how highly Edwardsville Glen Carbon is held in regard. RFPs, requests for proposals. Um, this is kind of an interesting aspect that many people probably don't know about. So there are three different groups that I really work with on RFPs. Intersect Illinois, which was created under the around our administration and continued under uh, JV's administration. Uh, but essentially it's the economic development arm for the state of Illinois. And what they do is work with uh, brokers, national brokerage firms to put together Excel documents with hundreds of questions. Uh, and we get to go out and try to fill out these things. So a request for proposal typically comes into me and it looks something like this. We want to hire 200, 300 employees within the next year. We're going to start our salary at 85,000. We need 200 to 300 acres of green space. We need 13 kilowatts of electricity. We need a gas line. Uh, we need access to the rail. And so I get to dissect those and look through those and see if we have any sites available and then start that process to work with a developer or a broker on filling out, or SIUE, I worked with Janet many times on RFPs, um, just to see if we have sites or infrastructure available for those larger scale projects. Greater St. Louis, formerly known as the St. Louis Regional Chamber, that was another group that used to put out RFPs. So we do the same thing because sometimes leads are developed in Missouri, but they want to be in the St. Louis MSA. So they, they do cross that river. So we would apply for or, or, or fill out those requests for proposals for the state of Missouri as well. And then the last group there is DCO, which is the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. I talked to our local representative one time, at, at least once a week. And she, Tracy Glenn is her name. She comes with me. She, she operates something called the Edge Tax Credit, which is an incentive from the state of Illinois um, that can help businesses either come to the state or stay in the state. Uh, tax credits are an interesting thing. I, you know, on the backside of deals, they can really help um, offset project costs, essentially. Uh, she is very successful with that edge tax credit. So if you do know of a business that is looking uh, maybe to not, maybe to leave Missouri or to expand, have them reach out to me and I can get them in contact with the state. Relationships. Relationships are a big thing in, 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 this, in this business. I talk with many, many people. I talk to our citizens. I talk to Madison County. I talk to the state. I talk to developers. I talk to many, many people. Uh, this is, I talk to bankers, I talk to just so many different groups, our educational institutions. I try to define what our needs are. I try to do market analysis to see what editors will maybe missing and what we can target, some target industries. Uh, but that is all relationship based. Uh, I talked to many, many brokers in the room and I said, hey, you know, 
Uh, I talked to a small business in Edwardsville. Uh, they have five employees. I need 1,500 square feet. I need this lease rate. So I reach out to all my broker friends and I say, hey, can we do this in Edwardsville? I'd like to keep them here. I want to keep them here. How do we do that? Help me out. And they, they respond. Uh, and they do very well. Incentives. What are incentives? Um, there are so many mixed feelings and mixed reviews on what incentives are. But the state of Illinois essentially affords municipalities three ways of doing incentives. You have TIF districts, which are tax increment, increment financing districts. You have the ability to form business districts, which essentially is a geographic location with parcels identified, addresses identified. In that area, you're paying an additional 1% sales tax, but that sales tax then goes back into that development. And then you have the enterprise zones. Edwardsville has a very, very famous enterprise zone. It was one of the top rated enterprise zones in Illinois, and it has been so successful over the years. Uh, that is the gateway enterprise zone. Without gateway, you know, Edwardsville may not be where we are today. Back in 1996, 1997, when gateway was formed, under leadership and guidance and vision. I don't know if they saw what, I don't know if they knew what impact Gateway was gonna have on the future of Edwardsville. So in between 270, 255, 111, there is over 20 million square feet of warehouse and distribution space. Now, why is that important? Well, when it comes down to things like property taxes, the enterprise zone affords a 10 year property tax abatement for any of the increase in assessed value that is triggered. Well, what was that before it was warehouses? Farmland. What was that being taxed as? A couple thousand dollars a year. I can tell you now that one building down there pays property taxes in the amount of $900,000 a year. Now take that times all the buildings that are down there. And that's what kind of impact smart visionary thinking has done for this community. Uh, Gateway is set to expire here in, in three years, which means the city is looking and constantly trying to redefine what it's gonna look like going forward. Is enterprise zone the right idea? Is that the right tool to do again? We have untapped potential still in the I-55 corridor. Um, is that an area that we need to focus on? There's corporate headquarters out there. There's going to be a park north development out there, but there are two other elbows out there or uh, areas in that corridor that are not developed yet. Oh, I've talked a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm good at that. It's my job. <laughs> Marketing and branding. This is kind of one of the current trends. Uh, What's our brand? I hear it all the time. What's Edwardsville's message? What do people think of Edwardsville? Uh, two years ago, Mayor Rizzoby created a tourism advisory committee. Um, it's been an interesting process, and I'm, I'm fortunate to be the liaison to it. And actually, Janet Harmon is our, our chair of that committee. She has vision. She's, she's seen Edwardsville. Uh, she's watched Edwardsville grow and change over the years. And she had a very similar role to what I do at University Park for SIUE. She runs our tourism and she keeps pushing the limits and has her eyes wide open for what, for what the future of Edwardsville can be with tourism. One little piece of that is sports tourism. And that's kind of our why we went down the path to do uh, Thunder Family Park phase two. Uh, there is a market for sports. We've seen it grow time and time again. Many people have talked about how sports tourism has grown. I think Nate has probably talked about on the family part based to, to this group. Um, we're going to add certain things out there that we don't really have access to in Edwardsville. And that's going to be great because it's right off of I-55. Uh, but sports tourism out there, what is that going to bring out there as well in the form of Park North and other ancillary development throughout this town? Will it increase potential Residential development, it could. Will it increase some commercial development? It can, um, it will. And I just come back to tourism and I wanna come back to green space. And I wanna come back to the mayor and administration's current pushes. Hey, we, we are doing some cool things with growth and development, but let's not forget about 
something like quality of life, which is why many individuals in this room live here. Um, we love our green spaces. We love access to the trails and we love what that means to our community. So as of January 1st, uh, the Edwardsville Enhancement Plan eventually went into effect, which allows the city to identify strategic areas and to potentially try to get green space corridors throughout this town that enhance the quality of life. I'll talk, but I am, I think uh, you have 10 minutes and I'm happy to field any questions. I don't intentionally cut down trees, I promise you that. <laughs> Uh, the orchards that's in Glen Carbon, please call them. Okay. <laughs> Tim. Uh, depending on what quarter you are in, that has been estimated to be roughly ten thousand employees. Which, if you think about the substantial workforce impact, that is incredible. Everybody can see the uh, and you actually mentioned a lot. Of, what do you see in as far as uh, uh, single family home construction? Like, where is it? Is it is it happening in the areas that are just not readily visible, or what are you seeing on, on single family? It's an interesting topic right now. Obviously, I study our local trends, but I also study national trends. Uh, we are not alone in this battle to identify new single family homes. We've identified certain areas in the city that we think would be prime for development. Um, and we were working with developers and we're in constant conversations as to how to get that done. What are the next steps? What do they need uh, as landowners? What type of development that can be? And what the definition of single family homes are moving forward? Most recently, Edwardsville, Glen Carbon, we've seen a lot of mixed use development. Um, so the market is kind of pulled away from single family home development. I mean, many, many things, many things. Cost, <laughs> cost would be one of them. I think, you know, if you look at 21, 22, 23, 24, there's been some inflationary factors that have substantially increased costs. I think I had a pie in the sky dream. I had house plans drawn for myself and the first bid that I got back caused substantial sticker shock and almost a hospital visit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Only one. Okay. He said that out the new development, there are some things that are gonna be there that are not currently offered. What is that? And then the second, yeah, I think we're pretty well versed in uh, like I-55 code and our new comp plan identifies some things too, but let's say a massive truck stop wanted to come in the I-55 code, which we see in other cities, villages, we would not permit something like that. We would or not zone for something like that. So Plumber Family Park, that the actual phase two of it is actually going to offer four full-size baseball fields that are city-owned and city-run and six NCAA beach volleyball courts uh, with a very nice setup around it with lights. And then 12 additional pickleball courts, which we have 12, but 24 courts, um, we've talked to many people, and 24 courts is a magic magic number to kind of host like a St. Louis Regional Midwest tournament where pickleball is huge. It is incredible. I, I don't I don't play it yet. I'm getting into it now, but it's massive. Um, but when you get people coming to Edwardsville from Iowa, Minnesota, and you can showcase everything that Edwardsville has because they came to a pickleball tournament, that's a good thing. So we did double our court. Um, and then Park North, they're going to have a, a golf concept out there that we have not yet had seen. So, yeah, not 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 that brand, but yes. Uh, on the, the potential intersection by Palmer Family Park and Center Grove Road, uh, is there any indication of that coming anytime soon? Or the near future, and then is there any talk about expanding the enterprise downtown? 
Plumber Family Park and Governors. Okay, yes, that we are very hopeful that that is open by the end of this fiscal calendar year. The Sports Park Drive extension. So once that gets connected to 143 and Governors right there, that's going to definitely decrease the traffic on Goshen Road, which if you know Goshen Road, that's an oil chip road. Um, it's going to create a different entrance point to the park, which will be great. And you'll drive through that ancillary development of Park Wolf um, to get to Palmer. So there will be a 55 center. It, it's Governor Parkway and 55. It's actually going to be down where Blackburn is, Blackburn Road is, if you're familiar with that. So on, on that side, though, the city, we, we went after a very large, it was written about in the newspaper, I can talk about it, uh, a grant opportunity called the Raise Grant. And that will dramatically change transportation in the Eastern Corridor, especially on Ghost Road, um, starting all the way up at actually Old Troy Road um, with shared use paths, some green paths, and an actual not oil and ship road. <laughs> And then what was your other question? So the state limits you to 30 years. 30 years, no matter what. Um, you get 15 years, then you can re request um, an extension. We did that back, I believe, maybe when Tim was here. Um, so that expires in 2027. That zone is gone. Now, what the state affords you to do is it designates the total number of zones that can be allowed in the state of Illinois. I believe right now we're at 97. So as one expires, the year before they open up the application process for a new zone. So we have already started those conversations to essentially replace Gateway, if there's an appetite for it. <laughs> a comprehensive plan is ours is called Envision Edwardsville 2044. It is a living, breathing, working document that guides our principles and our growth into the future. It talks about comprehensive land uses, zoning code, building codes, things like that. So balance is the key word, but I think what many people don't know is that this over here, the city has incentivized for redevelopment. This over here, outside of a business district, the city has not incentivized. So in this area, we have things like TIP 2 and TIP 4. That's your downtown. And TIP 2 kind of weaves around over here to Market Basket, out to our RP Lumber. So we in TIFs, we are able to uh, incentivize redevelopment, reinvestment. What we also added, were the same areas to the gateway enterprise zone, which allows um, an investment tax credit, building material sales tax exemption. So the city has taken a very proactive look at the older part of town and said, hey, what can we do to help reinvest in some of our more entrepreneurial adventures and some of our, you know, the things that give Edwardsville charm? Okay, the last one. Yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, so Oh, we're getting all the other grants. I mean, they're great facilities and stuff, but I just noticed, you know, since we're bringing in more tax revenues than ever, but I think I just saw where we're going to be 24, 25, and 90 trillion dollars deficit on our budgets. 
Is that incorrect reporting or is that yeah, that's the it's 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 not a yeah it's not a nine million dollar deficit. So we're actually not going to operate at a deficit at all. What what things? What what things are failed to? So when you sit in a room for an hour and a full budget is written and recorded, and then you see an article and four things are printed, things can be misconstrued and 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 certain. <laughs> I would be happy to take anybody through our budget anytime anybody wants to look at it. The funding that isn't used this year rolls over to the next year, which actually means you're not operating at any sort of deficit. It looks like a deficit when you're going into your next fiscal year, but that's because it doesn't count the funds in this current fiscal year. Some awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.